Hi everyone, it's me DM and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button down below and also hit the notification bell so you will be updated with the upcoming videos that I created just for you. So here's a review of what should be in your literature review and how it would be organized. So remember to select and analyze studies that have been done about your topic. You choose scholarly literatures, you choose a consistent way of organizing your literature. Should it be chronological, thematic, or conceptual, or methodological? I want you to take a look at the following literature review that I will be showing to you. Study how it is organized. Check whether it is chronological, thematic, or conceptual, or methodological. Aside from that, determine how research gaps are presented, whether conflicting results are provided, or the lack of studies on a specific topic is given. What are the keywords used to present these? How are the sentences organized? Let's check it out. So this literature is organized conceptually. Notice that the literature presents the teaching strategies or approaches which are the concepts or the variables explored in the study. Specifically, it presents what a constructivist teaching strategy is in relation to science education. How did the authors introduce the topic? Did it include a thesis statement? Apparently yes, right? Notice how they started that section with this statement. So this is by itself a thesis statement and then the succeeding statements are a proof of this claim by the researchers by citing different studies. Sometimes the studies are presented first and then the thesis statement. In what ways are conflicting results from previous studies or even the lack of a study on an issue presented here? How is the statement structured? Look at the second sentence in the first paragraph. But there have been relatively few studies which focus on instructional strategies. Note the use of the word few to present the argument that there seems to be a lack of study on the topic being explored by the authors. You can also use this in your paper. And this way you are strengthening the need to do a research on a topic. Remember that one of the reasons you are doing your study is that either there are conflicts of the results or there are no studies or there are only a few of them about your topic. You don't do a research on a topic that has already been established. That would definitely question the significance of your paper. How then should you present how the different studies you reviewed relate to one another? So I'm going to show you an example for this.
Notice from the previous excerpts the usage of the phrases likewise in another related work. And similarly, these words denote how these different works relate to each other. How about when the results are conflicting? How do you present them? Notice how the authors presented conflicting results. The authors use words and phrases to show that studies on test anxiety have contrasting results. In this way, they are establishing a research gap that their study intends to fit. You may also use words and phrases such as on the contrary, however, by contrast, on the other hand, alternatively. I'm going to show you another example. So, this section of a literature review is also organized, what do you think, conceptually. It presents what concept understanding in science is and the different ways it is developed in science education. From teaching science concepts to concept development or formation. So, the authors discuss what teaching concepts mean and the next form a concept. In this way, the literature is organized by a concept or theme. Take note that these literatures are also the sources of your definition of variables as discussed. Remember that your concepts, variables, and their indicators and the relationship among them are what you are studying. As such, you have to present these in the literature review. In the previous excerpt, the subheadings are the variables themselves. So if you're going to organize a chronological order of a literature review, I'm going to show you another example. Take a look at this. So while it is organized in such a way that early studies about the topic are presented first, followed by the most recent ones. Thank you for participating with me and reading some selections so we can better understand how to draft our own literature review. Join me as we understand together the mechanics that revolve around quantitative research. So I hope I can see you in my next video. Thank you for watching.